Hey everyone, this is Rob. Today I'm recording a very special video. So special, in fact, that I'm appearing in front of the camera. And what makes this video so special? It's the contents of this box. In fact, the contents of this box, you could say, has been coming to me for about 35 years now. Of course, not literally, and if you really think about the math, I think it's 33, 34 years. But the point is, the contents of this box represent a portion of my youth that never happened, or something that could have been. I've always been into video games ever since I was a kid. I remember being a tiny little boy and barely being able to reach the control panel of an Asteroids Deluxe cabinet. Um, so I've always been into video games and of course as soon as I could get one I got an Atari 2600. Soon after that I got a ColecoVision. I almost got a 5200. I, I made a video about that. Um, but anyway I had a ColecoVision. Uh, so I've always been into arcade games and console games. But I never had what's in this box. So what's in the box? A 1982 GCE Vectrex console. For some of you, that doesn't mean anything. For some of you, the, probably the ones that searched out Vectrex in YouTube, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But what it is, it's a standalone, kind of like those old, I guess they're Mac, I'm not a Mac, I'm an Apple or Mac person. I think they're old Macintoshes. The ones that were all one unit where it had a monitor built in and then the controller in this case, or keyboard for the Mac. Um, would just attach to it. You could, it was semi-portable. You could take it around with you. Um, but it was the coolest thing. It had really cool graphics because it had vector graphics. If you don't know what that is, if you recall the old Asteroids or Tempest games from the arcade, they drew their graphics not by um, raster, not by pixels, but by drawing lines, geometric shapes that weren't filled in. They were just outlines. And in fact, the Asteroid ones is a very good example of it because it's a, it was black and white. Uh, Battle Zone was another one that used vector graphics. Uh, Star Wars, the old Star Wars uh, 1983 arcade game also used vector graphics. And the thing about vector graphics is because you just drew the points and then connected the lines, they were very sharp graphics and you can do a pretty decent emulation of 3D. Of course, again, they're, they're not really full polygons, but it represented 3D fairly well. And uh, the graphics were just really sharp. The negative is uh, this Vectrex was black and white, like Tempest. I mean, not Tempest. Tempest is actually color. So Star Wars, like uh, Asteroids. But they emulated color or, you know, added color by using these color overlays. And I'll show you that here pretty soon, as soon as I get this open. But anyway, I used to play this thing all the time, every Sunday, at a store called Smitty's in Phoenix, Arizona. We used to go to church go to lunch and then go to Smitty's. And we, my, it, was, it was like a giant super target at the time. My parents would go grocery shopping or it had like tools and a department store kind of feel to it as well. But there was also an electronics, an electronics section where I first saw the Vectrex. And I would go there and play it all the time. I don't know why I never asked for it for Christmas. I ended up asking for a ColecoVision. Actually, now that I think about it, it was probably because of Donkey Kong. But I always wanted one of these things. And after a while, I forgot about it. And it wasn't until the mid-90s where I roomed with somebody who had a Vectrex. Just some crazy coincidence, this guy had a Vectrex. It was, so it had been about, I don't know, 10, 12 years since I even thought about a Vectrex. And I thought it was pretty cool at the time, but I didn't really appreciate it until maybe two or three years ago when I really started wanting a Vectrex. Now, I, I could have picked one up several years ago and it'd been just going up in price, but... For whatever reason, I never did until recently. So today, this package came in and I'm super excited. I've been wanting to open it all day, but I wanted to open it under the right circumstances and I wanted to record it um, so I can capture, at least for myself, I don't know how many people will be watching this, but at least to capture what it feels like to finally own a Vectrex. And I ordered a Vectrex complete with box and uh, about a dozen or so games. And uh, I don't know, it, the, the pictures look really good. I haven't opened it yet, still sealed. Uh, hopefully it works. Hopefully all the boxes are in good shape. They looked in good shape in all the photos. I was very much wanting uh, a package that had all the, uh, I'm not so really caring about the boxes so much as I am the overlays because the uh, Vectrex again is black and white. They had these color like gel hard plastic overlays that go over the monitor and get, really make the game, I think. So lots of people will sell them with just loose carts and for me, that's no good. So anyway, without further ado, let me get this sucker open. Again, I have not opened it. So I, I mean, I kind of know what to expect, but 
I hope it's well packaged. It seems like it is. I emailed the person who I bought it from on eBay uh, right after I bought it and asked them very politely if they would be sure to package it in a way that would ensure that it didn't get all screwed up on the way over here. Um, and they assured, assured me that they did, and they shipped it on Monday. I won the auction on Sunday, and today is Thursday. So pretty quick. So there's a little note here from this person. Oh, it just has the addresses. All right, whatever. Don't care about that. I know my address. Well, I don't know if you can see this, but it looks very well packaged. Lots of bubble wrap. Put some stuff on the ground here. And uh, lots of this foam stuff, too. So, hey, uh, I won't mention their full name, but hey, Annie, you did a good job. You shipped it out very quickly, right the next morning, and you packaged it extremely well, it looks like. Oh, extra controller. I already know what that is. The extra controllers are actually quite pricey. A controller by itself can cost as much as a bare Vectrex. And this is a controller in the box, so that's a that's a really good. The controllers themselves, oh these look these look like I can already tell even without opening it, the boxes are very have very crisp edges. So that's cool. As a collector, you really like that. Um, man, she did a good job. I think she was a reseller, although she only had like two or three uh, ratings. But I noticed when I looked at her rating, she had sold another Vectrex um, with boxes. So I don't know where she's getting all these Vectrexes from. Or Vec Vectri? Vectrexes? I don't know. Multiple Vectrex machines. Oh, man, these look like they're in great shape. I'm pretty excited. Just more. Get pack on those. Scramble. Now there are, I can already tell, this is the one with two different, there are two berserks, which is fine. Um, I probably won't sell it. I never really sell anything. I'm kind of a pack rat when it comes to video games. I keep packaging and all that crazy stuff. But um, it doesn't bother me having an extra. So here's the unit itself. I don't think there's anything else in here. So I'm gonna put this down. All right. Package on the inside here. It's missing the top portion of the styrofoam, she said. Um, when you're collecting styrofoam, it sounds stupid, but styrofoam is a big deal sometimes. I bought uh, a box NES at a classic game convention uh, a few weeks ago, and it came with box and styrofoam. I got a pretty good deal on it, but uh, somebody was telling me that they had paid $100 for just a box and styrofoam for an NES, so it could be crazy. Um, you know, I know you can't smell this. It's not a bad smell, but it smells like like old lady house, like mothballs or, it smells like 1982 or your grandmother's 1982 house, which is kind of appropriate, right? I wouldn't be surprised if this thing, considering the condition it's in, the box is decent. Um, that if it was in storage in somebody's attic. It came from Wisconsin. At least that's where it was shipped from. So they could have a cellar. We don't have cellars in Texas, at least not here. But we do have attics, which I never use. Anything I put in the attic, I think it just melts. Again, I'm kind of a stickler, even though this is an original packaging, I just don't want to tear into it. All right. Starting to come out here. There it is. Awesome. There it is. GCE Vectrex. Wow. It's pretty nice. The box is in pretty good condition. Has a price tag. Wow. Okay. It was bought at Gimbal's. When this debuted in 1982, it came out in November of 1982. 
it debuted for $199, which is about $475 in 2016 money. Anyway, I was reading about this, and soon after, I mean, it came out in 82, a lot of folks know that the crash, video game crash, uh, was 1983. So when 1983 came and, it, you know, the video game market bottomed out, they dropped it to 149. Actually, Milton Bradley bought out GCD and to do the global marketing for it. And as soon as they did, the global, the market for video games just, just crashed. But um, anyway, they dropped it to 149 then $100, and then towards the end of its life, they were just dumping it for 50 bucks. And uh, I know you can't see that here, but there's a gimbal sticker right there that says, hard to see, $149, and then it's crossed out, it says $49, $49.99. So that's really cool. Somebody picked that for 50 bucks. Um, I would have been stoked, even in 84, to get this for 50 bucks. So I'm just going to show you the different sides. I can't see the sides that you're looking at. So I'll show some of the games. You, you can see the overlays. This is a plastic overlay. I'll pull them out. Cartridge, manual, and the box. So it didn't have a lot of games. I think it was like somewhere in the 20s. And that was sort of the problem. Well, the problem was it came out at a bad time. That was the problem because it was a great system. There's the controller. The controller actually plugs in there. You'll see it in a bit. It came, this is a kind of a neat game uh, or system that it came with a built-in game called Mindstorm, which is an, a pretty decent Asteroids ripoff. I played a lot of that. And uh, not much on this side, but I'll show it to you anyway. Just some generic, you know, kids smiling at their TVs. You've seen that before. I'm looking at an Atari 5200 box over there. The whole family just going, oh my God, I'm playing Atari 5200. This is fantastic. And it's not. And then I'm going to have an NES over there. Also the same thing, that, you know, family stoked. Wait, does this actually have a top styrofoam? She said it didn't. Well, there's a styrofoam piece there. Unless she packaged it upside down. She may have. And here it is. Oh, okay. She put a lot of bubble wrap in it, which I appreciate. But Okay, I see there's no bottom side of them under the top, which is fine. Does come with the actual manuals, which is really cool. I'll put this off to the side. Where's the front? Let's put the front towards you all. Okay. Here, I don't want to lose the bubble wrap to hold it in place. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. This is it, right there. So, my unit says made in Taiwan. There are two different locations where these are manufactured one was in Hong Kong, one was in Taiwan. From what I hear, the one in Hong Kong was more reliable, but. Um, this one was in great shape. In fact, this looks to be in great shape, actually physically in great shape, not just the box. But So this here looks like it's a handle, but it's actually the cartridge slot. And it has, you know, the um, power cord is just attached right to it. It's not detachable. So back here, there's a brightness. Uh, adjustment knob here and I believe this is an 8 inch screen and I don't really know how to just tap it I, I've never owned one of these before I'm not sure how it comes out oh there's a little latch I'm surprised that more people don't talk about this latch being broken because I can imagine breaking come on come loose Wow, this is in pretty good condition. So I don't have power here, but I will power it up. I'm gonna say I'm gonna wait on that. I will power it up and get a better angle on it. But for now, I'm just gonna open some of these packages. But um, first of all, this controller is much bigger than than it seems like it would be when you see pictures of it. Um, it's a a self-centering stick but it's, you can tell it's analog I think most of the games don't require the analog function um, but it is analog so 
Yeah, it beat N64 by how many years? A billion, right? Uh, the buttons are pretty good. They're not sticky. Um, I don't think this is going to need a rebuild or anything. This, uh, it's it's kind of weird, but the different G the different Vectrexes have their country of origin here. This one says made in Taiwan. So again, hopefully it'll fire up and work. Um, they all buzz, so when we turn that on, we'll probably notice that. I was just concerned that the uh, joystick would be in great condition, and it is. Um, I was reading up already uh, about how to repair the joysticks if there's problems, but I, unless there's some kind of internal mechanical problem that I don't see, it feels great. None of the buttons stick or anything, so that's cool. Leave that there. Manual, let's see what we got. Wow, it's so crazy to see all the original inserts because the whoever owned it must have been like me. I keep all this shit. Wow, okay, so Electronic Games, if you want to subscribe to that, which doesn't even exist anymore. This isn't even, I don't think, this isn't even EGM. This isn't Electronic Gaming Monthly. This is before that, called Electronic Games. I don't know if y'all could see that. Probably not. But uh, that's really cool. You get 44% off. Savings of almost $15.50. New stand price, 35 fit. So it's a, a year for 1997. Seems kind of pricey for 1982, right? So it's like 40 bucks, I'm guessing. So I got multiple of these for some reason. I guess they really want you to subscribe to Electronic Games. And there's another one here. A lot of those. So here is the Mindstorm uh, overlay. This is actually kind of cool because a lot of folks will sell the unit because it comes built in with Mindstorm but they lose this thing they didn't keep it around of course this person did I mean they even kept the, the manual and everything else but um, let me see if I can do this here it's going to be that difficult put these two there and it just snaps in place thing yep there it is so that's how you get color <laughs> This one doesn't really do much. It just shows you a grid, player one and player two. Um, but it does have a cool little feature. I'll, I'll get another better camera angle on this, but where you ha it has the button assignments. So they correspond to this. You'll see the right one is fire, next to that is thrust, and then escape, which I think is just hyperspace if you're playing asteroids. So these three buttons and then button one is not used according to this. So yeah, one little thing to note on the, if you don't know what to do in the game, just look at the overlay. It should tell you what the buttons do. So I'll leave that on there for now. And uh, what do we got here? Important reminder, there are 13 different minefields in the Mindstorm game, each more difficult than the last. If you can survive all 13, you will enter a new type of universe that possesses even greater threats and challenges and maybe even a few surprises. It does not indicate a problem with your console. Hmm. If the screen goes blank after completing minefield 13, just press the reset button on the console to continue gameplay. So that's interesting that they've actually uh, included this because I read about this. The original Mindstorm that's built into it has a bug, apparently. It, I mean, they're, they're kind of counting as a feature now, I guess. But apparently if you get to level 13, uh, the game crashes. And so a lot of people would call in. And from my understanding, they made a Mindstorm 2, which isn't really Mindstorm 2, but version 2, where they patched it up. But um, I guess it was a big enough problem that they started including this little you know, reminder about the game Mindstorm if you get to level 13, you know. That's so weird. It says, you will enter a new type of universe that possesses even greater threats and challenges if you go to 13. That means reset the game? That's a greater threat and challenge? I, I don't know. That's really strange. But interesting that they acknowledged that there was an issue. But yeah, apparently if you called them they would send you a Mindstorm 2 cartridge, which again, I think it was just version 2 where it was fixed, but I don't know. You can look, Google that shit, I don't know. Uh, the Vectrex Arcade Owners Club, it's free. So I guess this person never joined it. Lucky for me, because I love shit like this. As a new owner of the Vectrex Arcade System, you are invited to join the Vectrex Owners Club at no cost or obligation in all capital letters, no cost or obligation. As a member, you will periodically receive special discounts and other offers on Vectrex cartridges and a newsletter filled with information on upcoming new games, game winning tips, exciting contests, and much more. It is absolutely free, again in all capital letters, and available only to the Vectrex Owners Club members. To join, just fill out the self-addressed postage paid card 
detach it along the dotted line and drop it in the mail. So, wow, okay, so type of store where Vectrex purchased, department store, discount store, general merchandise, Sears, Pennies, Wards. Does, does anybody know what, maybe Sears. JC Pennies, my mom used to work there, Montgomery Wards, crazy. TV appliance store, toy hobby, craft store, specialty electronic store, catalog showroom. Family size, one, two, three, four, five or more. That's really cool. Keep this part for your records. Model number HP3000, you can write the serial number. So I guess I have a really high serial number machine. They probably moved from Hong Kong to Taiwan for the manufacturing. Uh, what's this? Custom designed accessories for your Vectrex. Now available by mail. So there are some accessories. Oh, okay. Wow. That is nuts. So this carrying case, it says it's $14.95. I see these on eBay. They go for like $200. This thing, it's just a dust cover. It says $5.95. Again, it goes for about $200 in shitty condition. So, wow. If you had ordered like a whole bunch of these, you'd be 100 there, right? Big time. So that's really cool. Um, I'm surprised they don't talk about the light pen or the 3D imager, which are real accessories. I mean, this is an accessory, but not what I was thinking of. The 3D imager actually has a color wheel. You put these goggles on and you put this thing like the old, um, what's it called? Viewfinders or Viewmasters, where you put in a, a wheel and you could see the you know 3D images. It was kind of like that. It was a wheel, but it had just blocks of color and it would spin at a certain rate. So when you stared at the screen, it would put color on certain objects on the screen or a certain way. And it would also make it 3D. They had three special 3D cartridges that were made um, that work with that 3D imager. And the 3D imager itself, it runs anywhere from two to 300 bucks all the way up for, I've seen that stuff for 1200, although it never sells. People try to sell for 1200, but I would say a fair price would probably be about four or 500 bucks for that 3D imager. Um, I'd like to get it one day, but that's, that was a lot of, it, it's a lot of money. Um, then there's a light pen. Uh, the light pen is just what it sounds like. It allows you to draw on the screen. And there was a few programs that came uh, that supported that. But again, because the system was so short lived, there weren't a whole lot of them made and they're pretty pricey. The light pens, there's reproduction light pens that people have made that work like a light pen, but don't actually look like the original light pen. Those run you about 120 bucks. So the original ones run about two to 250. And then you have to buy the software. The good thing is for those those pieces of software, you can buy a multi-cart that has all the official Vectrex games plus a lot of homebrew games and some Max. Um, and there's a one single multi-cart that has a, all all those games on one cartridge. You plug it in, you select the game you want from a menu, and you play that game. The drawback to that is, of course, you don't have the overlays. So if you buy that cartridge, which runs anywhere from I've seen it as low as 138 bucks recently to uh, almost 200 dollars, but should be about 150 to be fair. Um, if you buy that cartridge, it's great because you have all the games in one place, but you don't have the overlays. So then you're now you're hunting down the overlays. And maybe I'll do that for some later because I don't really want to pay for boxes for all the other games. But um, anyway, um, back to this. I'm not going to read this whole manual. Some important safety instructions. Okay, that just came straight out. I guess that was an add-on. Talks about unpacking. Uh, it even mentions the, the owner's club registration card. That's kind of interesting. Um, the Mindstorm instructions, I don't see those anywhere. I guess they're not included. Talks about putting the, the overlay in. Um, you know, typical stuff. I think I can figure it out. I think we're gonna be okay. So the interesting thing about these numbers, are there are one, two, three, four of these buttons. The outside button, button four, is typically the one with the most action because it's just more easy uh, to get, it's easier to get to. So anyway, that's cool stuff. What is this? This is the Mindstorm instructions. What is this? It's photocopied. What do I have here? Oh, it is the Mindstorm instructions. But they're photocopied. Mindstorm controls. I don't know if this was the person that sold it to me that had a photocopy of them, or um, if they just stopped including the official booklet and started including photocopies. It looks kind of crudely made but honestly if they were going down they might have just uh, saved money so we're not printing any more of those instruction manuals we'll just photocopy one we have in the office 
So I, I'm actually betting the latter. I doubt somebody would take the time to photocopy uh, a Mindstorm instruction manual. It's pretty simple to figure out. It's basically asteroids. So cool stuff in there. All right. Put that away. Let's take a look at some of the, well, let's, let's open up the, what I know to be the control panel or controller for player two. So it does support, even though only one uh, controller goes in there, it does support two, two controllers for multiplayer games, although there are not a whole lot of them. And again, finding a controller by itself in decent condition will run you between $100 to $125. This one's in the box. So it's op it is open, so it's not new in box, but still, having the box is kind of cool. there so yeah it's a control panel there's a price tag on here no okay yep so this was bought at JC Penney's this is great uh, the original price was $39.95 and now it says it's on sale or now it's $9.99 so somebody made out like a bandit on this because again if you had bought a bunch of these back then you'd be a hundred air right now maybe a thousand there even so uh, I kind of don't like that it's got tape. Okay, this side doesn't have tape. Okay, cool. I guess that's the original factory tape on this side. Okay. Ooh, this one is in very nice condition. Because there's no, not a whole lot of two-player games, this probably wasn't used much, if at all. It probably was used. Oh my God, this thing feels amazing. Like brand new. This was a great addition to this package. I'm probably, this feels so good, I'm probably gonna swap this out with this. Although it doesn't match exactly. I have a stickler for that. Um, this one says made in Hong Kong because it was made in Hong Kong. This one says made in Taiwan, just like the system. I think the system says made in Taiwan someplace. I don't know why they're so proud of where it's made. Well, this is made in the USA. I think it says me Taiwan. Yeah, it says on the back. So I don't know. This this is a really nice controller. I I'm really happy that this was included in the deal. I don't think people that were bidding on this really understood uh, the value of just this controller. So that is awesome. Here. I don't know if I even have any two-player games because again, I didn't play a whole lot of. Uh, Backtrex other than what was in the store demos. So put that there. Hopefully you can still see that. Fit so some of these games, huh? Okay, this is the one that has the double berserks. Put this here. Uh, Scramble. This was a arcade game. I think it was Konami. I'm not sure. Yep, it says right there, license from Konami. So um, you can kind of see there, it was a, a side-scrolling shooter, kind of like Gradius. Um, I'm not sure, I always get confused, scramble with Vanguard. I think Vanguard is the one where you could shoot in all four directions. Because the same guy, yeah, because the same guy that owned the Vectrex in college, my roommate, owned a Vanguard machine, and I'm pretty sure that was it. I can't believe I never played that. Vectrex, I didn't play much of that Vectrex or that Vanguard machine, but um, he had a full-size Vanguard machine in his, his apartment, or our apartment, and we never played it. Uh, but this is Scramble. Yeah, so this one is more of a, you shoot forward and drop bombs. So it's almost like Radius, really, predecessor to Radius, really, Scramble. It's, it's a good game. Uh, Berserk. This one is the, uh, what people knew Berserk for was, for me anyway, was that had uh, talking in it. So it, it would always say, intruder alert, intruder alert, get the humanoid. Um, anyway, this is a pretty much kind of a Pac-Man slash shooter. I don't know. It's got maze. You traverse the maze shooting all these. I always think, uh, well, they don't look that accurate here, but in the arcade, uh, they look like Cylons to me. They kind of had that glowing eye that goes back and forth. So they, these, I guess, circle, but uh, they look like Cylons. But anyway, you just go through the mazes shooting these robots, and if you take too long, this this hopping happy ball, it's just a smiley face um, that comes going through the level. If you take too long, it comes and kills you. It's called Evil Auto. I just, I just remember that. Evil Auto um, 
because it's so ridiculous. There's a smiley face called Evil Auto, and it's just smiling. It just comes after you and kills the shit out of you every time. So it's kind of like the pterodactyl in Joust. If you played that, it's like in, impossible to beat. In fact, it's worse because you can actually defeat the pterodactyl in Joust. You cannot beat Evil Auto. So these things, I guess this guy just said, you know, screw it. They're cheap. I'm going to buy them all. The original price, $4.59 from a place called Job Lot Push Cart. Never heard of that. Must be up north. Uh, and the final purchase price looks to be $2.99, and he may have even gotten a deal. So $2.99, that's crazy. This one doesn't have, oh, it does. This one was purchased from Gimbals, like this, and it was originally $9.99 with a line through it, $4.99. Man, what good deals, right? The video game crash. I remember going into, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? A pharmacy pharmacy in my hometown and they had a bin of just 2600 games it was crazy and they were like a dollar so it was just a crash the crash just totally killed the market and uh, you know you can all thank Nintendo for um, video games being where they are right now because they revitalized it but Atari just ran that shit into the ground uh, because they didn't they didn't think ahead they didn't protect their system um, all kinds of other reasons I don't get into, but the point is, games were cheap in 1983 and 1984. What we have here, Clean Sweep. All right, so this is an original title for the Vectrex. Uh, essentially, this is Pac-Man. Uh, the story is really dumb. I read about this. Apparently, it's a bank, and you play a vacuum cleaner, and you're picking up coins and money. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But why does there even need to be a story? Just call it Eater Man, and you eat dots, and that's it. But for whatever reason, they... Interesting story about Clean Sweep. There's a version of it called... Um, what's it called? Mr. Boston. Mr. Boston... I've never heard of it, but I read about it. Mr. Boston's apparently a uh, liquor store franchise, I guess. I hope in Boston, but I really don't know from where. And for whatever reason, they had some kind of marketing deal with Vectrex, or the GCE folks, or Milton Bradley. I don't know. Milton Bradley actually bought... You see, and there was a special version of Clean Sweep with a top hat instead of a vacuum cleaner, and it was just called Mr. Boston. Clean Sweep. It was the same fucking game. Same game as Clean Sweep. It just had a top hat. They apparently made, I don't know, a handful of these, like four or five of them. I don't, I don't know. Some really ridiculously low amounts. And now uh, they sell them on eBay. You know, considering that there's so few of them, they're on eBay a lot. I've seen them anywhere from 31 Thirty-two, thirty-three thousand dollars, thousand dollars for Mr. Boston cartridges, to two thousand dollars, and even the two thousand dollar ones don't even sell. So that whole three, thirty thousand—I don't know where they're getting that number from, but it's still very rare. But uh, anyway, it's just a modified clean sweep, which is a modified Pac-Man, really. But uh, anyway, is there a price on these? I like seeing the prices. Yep, this one also came from Gimbals, nine ninety-nine, marked down to four ninety-nine. Web Wars, so you can probably tell from that, maybe if you could see it, Web Wars is Tempest. Um, pretty common back in the day to take existing uh, franchises and either copy them or license them if they couldn't get them. Uh, so Web Wars is just a, looks like a Tempest clone. Um, you kind of go down the web, it, you know, like the tunnels and Tetris and well, whatever. So this one also from Gimbal's 999, $4.99. Armor Attack. Um, never played this one looks like combat but I don't know could be different I see helicopters tanks I don't know looks kind of cool uh, two players I think so if it's like combat it should be pretty fun give that a shot uh, what do we got here I feel like it's Christmas like the best Christmas ever. All this cool stuff. Look at this. These boxes are in great shape. Super happy. Bedlam. Uh, I think it was either this one or Cosmic, Cosmic Chasm that my roommate in the 90s had. Um, I don't know. It's just the one where you... There was one where you disarmed a bomb and then you had to escape. Much like Cloak and Dagger, I think, from... Uh, Atari arcade game, but it says use the 
fast rotation button to speed up the cannon's movement. Beware the cross shaped destroyer droids are ruthless. Uh, Except responsible for protecting your collector from invaders, blast aliens. Maybe it's Cosmic Chasm that has the uh, the bomb in the middle chapter disabled. But anyway, you play in cannon and you shoot shit. Imagine that. The 80s, right? Everything, every button was shoot. Uh, Hyper Chase. If you're super old school, you may recognize this as a version of Turbo. A Sega game called Turbo, which is a, a, a racing game. I remember when Turbo and Pole Position were out at about the same time. I thought Turbo looked like shit compared to Pole Position. They both had big steering wheels on it. But um, anyway, maybe Enduro. If you played the 2600 games, um, Enduro from Activision was kind of like this. But it looks like a pretty cool racing game. Anyway, price on this one. Gimbals, $4.99. I guess most of these are Gimbals, $4.99. Yep, same with this one. All right, getting towards the end here. This looks to be a three pack. Again, Annie, you did a great job packaging this stuff up. I'm gonna give you a very good review on eBay. All right, what do we have here? Oh, Star Castle. So Star Castle, I didn't play it a whole lot in the arcades. I do remember playing it. It's kind of like Yars Revenge, where you had to destroy the center Star Castle that's protected by shields, and you you know work at the shields, and you finally can destroy the Star Castle. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, anyway. Um, the thing with Star Castle, it, it was a rare game for the Vectrex for some reason, and a boxed Star Castle like this runs usually from 120 to 150. Um, if you get a good deal, maybe you can get 90 or 100, but rarely below that. I've seen the cartridge itself sell for 80, 90 bucks. So to have the box and the instructions, I'm hoping it has instructions in there. So I haven't actually checked any of these. Let's open up Star Castle, because I'm curious what the inside of these look like. I hope but there's a one that doesn't have it. Well, there's part of it. Okay, so there's the Star Castle cartridge. Uh, they're pretty small, very lightweight, almost feels like there's nothing in it. So that goes there, it's very good condition. I mean, there's like, I mean, the plastic looks brand new. The um, manual, man, this thing is in great shape. I don't think, it's so crisp, it's like it's never even been open. So that's awesome. And then the overlay, they even have the overlay protector. This reminds me of like LPs. I, I was, I mean, LPs are even older than me. I didn't use records. Actually, I did. Maybe it's a really young kid. But they used to have this protective sleeve. Probably still do if you buy them. But um, that's really cool. So here's the Star Castle um, overlay. Man, it looks beautiful. I just love the colors. I mean, you had to be really creative back then because you don't have, you don't have the power that modern consoles have in PCs. So you had to get really creative on your artwork. Um, and this thing just looks, I mean, just the quality of this looks just amazing. And it's so shiny and like, it just looks pristine. Um, so the controls are thrust, fire, left and right. So that's more like asteroids where you use left and right as buttons. I'm not sure if you can also use the control stick for the joystick as buttons, but I guess maybe you have a, 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 a choice, probably the uh, arcade game of Star Castle had the buttons for left and right. But uh, anyway, that's really cool. Put this back in. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna open them all up. I'm just gonna assume that all of them have <laughs> the overlays and uh, manuals and stuff. But uh, anyway, Star Castle, that's really cool. Really stoked because it's such an expensive game. Even just buying the overlay is super expensive. I'm thinking very much about getting the, the multi-cart system, multi-cart cartridge uh, that has them all in one so that um, maybe I can just pull out the overlays and lay them aside and then I have to swap out the cartridges all the time. And then when I see uh, spare overlays just by themselves on eBay, I can just pick up the overlay and not have to worry about it because some of these suckers, there's one called Polder Rescue. I don't have it. Um, I'm lucky to have gotten Star Castle because really of the rare ones, this is the one I would have wanted. 
but there's one called Polar Rescue that I see on sale for two, three hundred bucks all the time. And it's supposedly not that good, at least the reviews I read of it. So it's just a matter of rarity. But uh, I'm glad I got Star Castle. Let's see what the price on this is. Wow, even the gimbals, it was expensive. It does say $9.99, but it does not have the markdown price of $4.99. So it's technically it was twice as expensive as the other ones, unless you know they marked it, they forgot to mark it down and they really gave it to you at that price. But anyway, Star Castle, put that there because Star Castle is awesome. Uh, Spinball, not Sonic Spinball, but Spinball. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing as Pinball, it's a video pinball. And from what I read, not very good. So whatever, pinball on your Vectrex. Let's put that there. Star Trek. Um, not sure if this is based on the Star Trek arcade game. Uh, I think it might. It's got 3D graphics, so you're in the cockpit. Actually, I don't remember. I think the Star Trek arcade game, you had both views. You would, I remember there was like a, the sit down version had like a captain's chair, you would sit down, it was white, and it had a rotary dial to like uh, change the direction of your of the Enterprise. Um, but this has gotten decent reviews, so, you know, I like Star Trek. I would have preferred it to be Star Wars Arcade, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, uh, that's cool. I like Star Trek. I'll give it a shot. Star Trek motion picture kind of sucked, but, you know, it was about finding God. It was so stupid. Oh, oh prices. Yep, four ninety nine gimbals. I have to, I have to think that Star Castle was also on sale. Maybe they knew that it was rare back then. I doubt it. Um, my last package here before I go into turning on the thing. I don't even know what games these are. Oh, I can see this one's Rip Off, which is a great name for a game, by the way. Rip Off. Rip Off and, and Cosmic Chasm. Okay, so first ripoff. I don't remember ripoff too well. Uh, apparently, there's an arcade game. <laughs> what a great name! All the excitement of the real arcade version. Beware of scavenging pirates trying to steal your precious fuel cells. The more pirates you destroy, the faster the successors become. Become. Guard your tanks carefully. That are always you are always outnumbered. I feel like I'm reading a little short little blurb of the game before uh, Starcade. If you ever seen Starcade, uh, there's an old video arcade video game game show in the mid maybe 83 84 something like that um, I, I remember seeing it on cable i don't remember maybe nickelodeon no i think it was just syndicated but anyway they would play the games and every time the people would go out and play the games they would answer like a, a trivia question or something and then if they won they could go play they could choose a game or go play the game and compete against the other person and, uh, anyway they would always give this little short blurb on the game and it would say all the excitement to you know precious fuels and pirates and whatnot but uh anyway it looks kind of cool it kind of looks like star castle but uh anyway, rip off and the last one i have is cosmic chasm i think this is the one that has the bomb in the middle uh or maybe you set the bomb oh, okay it says can you save the galaxy by blowing up the alien inhabited planet and get off the planet before you explode too you must burrow deep inside finding your way through the underground maze while battling the planet protectors Seems like you're kind of a terrorist, doesn't it? I mean, if you name the enemies Planet Protectors, it kind of makes it seem like you're the bad guy, right? I mean, you're probably like the terrorist, and on their planet, you suck, right? You're like the bad guy. But anyway, <laughs> you, I, have to, I have to destroy these people's worlds, right? So I burrow deep inside with my um, special, I guess, drill ship thing. And, uh, okay... <laughs> while battling planet protectors if you can get to the center plant your one bomb and try to find your way out it's only a matter of seconds before the planet goes boom so yeah this is the one where you and you had to do with the bomb you, you basically get to the center drop the bomb off and, and have to leave before it blows up why there isn't a longer timer or fuse on this bomb i don't know i guess it wouldn't have made for a very good game but anyway cosmic chasm i remember having a lot of fun with this the reviews were kind of so so but uh, this is the game I remember the most from playing at my uh, my roommates back um, on my roommates back trucks back in the nineties. So anyway, that's all the games that came with it. So I have a total of what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen with the built-in, 
but there's a duplicate of Berserk. So we'll go with 13. There's 13 distinct games that I have. Um, probably not going to play all 13, but I am going to fire this sucker up. And uh, I'm going to turn the video off right now and set it up so that we can see all the gameplay. All right. I'll be back. Okay, everybody, I am back. And I know that was instantaneous for you all, but for me it was actually several hours in real time. I took a break after the unboxing portion of this video, and I took the kids to school, had some breakfast, I even took a nap. Uh, but when I came back downstairs, I had to reconfigure the camera because I uh, wanted to get some really good, you know, best as I could game footage. And essentially all I'm doing is putting the camera on a tripod. Uh, initially I was getting a lot of glare off of the overlay, so uh, I've kind of moved it over to the side. I'm actually playing off to the side. I'm actually you know, on the right side of the, uh, the machine. So if I play poorly, it's not because of my skills. It's because I'm playing off to the side and my angle's off, you know, for sure. Because it's definitely not my skills. It's not like they've deteriorated over the last 30 years. I'm still sharp. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. I, I've seen pictures of it turned on, this particular unit turned on in the eBay posting. And... Um, I have no reason to believe it was packaged very well that it's just not going to come on. Now there's no cartridge in there right now, which should get it to boot up right into Mindstorm. And um, the other thing that you're probably going to notice is is it's a pretty well documented thing. That there's a an audio buzz that's prevalent uh, pretty much any time it's on. So um, if you hear that, it's not that the unit's defective. It's just a, a design flaw, I guess, or a feature. I mean. Maybe it's a, uh, no, it's not, it's a flaw. But it's kind of a part of its charm, you know? So let's go, I'm pretty excited here. Let's cross your fingers. Although by the time you cross your fingers, if you're watching this, this has already happened, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, here we go. No picture yet, there it is. All right. I cannot believe this thing is, it'll be 34 years this, mine's yeah, booted right to it, 34 years old this November. I don't know what this was manufactured, probably in 83, so, it's it's just starting? Yeah, it, oh wow. See, you can see how, you could not do that with pixels back then, um, the way it scales. Okay, so the buttons, it's very asteroid-like, buttons for Mindstorm, um, thrust. Not much inertia, uh, and I remember in Asteroids, if you thrust, you just drifted forever, but you kind of stop. Uh-oh. Kind of don't want to leave the middle most of the time. And these Astro- well, they're mines, they're not Asteroids. They're not, uh, they're not breaking down into smaller pieces, so that's a little bit different. Well, that's a cool effect. You can actually make a perfect Ast Asteroids clone on this machine because of the vector graphics and it's black and white. But, uh, so those little dots are actually the ones that turn into mines. Oh, geez. That wasn't really fair. Um, so I have escape, thrust, and fire are my buttons, and they map to these two, three, and four buttons. That one button's not used. Oops. Right. So the shuriken things apparently shoot. Um... Uh, I'm doing much worse than I remember ever doing before, although it's been a long time. Alright, so let me see if I can get past at least Minefield 2. Jesus Christ, the thing's going that fast. I kind of don't want to be in the center, but I do want to be in the center. Jesus. Alright, so I have to learn to use the escape button, which is like the hyperspace button in Asteroids. Essentially, like a warp you to some other part of the screen really quickly in case you're in trouble. But you gotta be careful because if you use hyperspace or escape too much, it'll end up te teleporting you right in front of a something. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. All I want to do is get to Minefield 3. This thing looks beautiful. Okay, it's not gonna happen. Game over. Uh, so the way it draws all these characters for the for the words is just it draws lines, so you can kind of see the lines when it's drawing them, or maybe you can't. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but um, wow, that 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 is is pretty cool. It just restarts. 
That reminds me of a Cylon ship from uh, Battlestar Galactica from the 70s. Alright, I don't want to get too deep into these games. I'm too caught up in it. I do have a lot of games to go through, but... Oh, what the hell, let me... It's my video. I'm just gonna play it again. You can always fast forward. I just want to get to 3. Minefield 3. That was pretty pathetic the first time. Alright. I got 5 ships. Oh my god, there's so many mines. So those little dots are the mines again. I just want those to spawn so that... Jesus. Looks like I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. Oh, don't fuck with me, flying saucer. Oh my, oh shit, I made it. Wow, I shot that right in front of me. Alright, minefield three, I'm happy. I haven't even lost a life yet. I might just reset at this point. Oh man. This almost reminds me of Geometry Wars too, which is of course way later. Jump Two Wars is a twin stick shooter uh, that came out originally for the Xbox 360. Oh my god. I'm gonna die. Fuck. Do I have to start all over? God, that's brutal. That was terrible. All right, that's good enough. Anyway, that's Mindstorm. It's a pretty, pretty fun game, especially for a free game that's included, built into the machine. Let me show you Escape. Oh, see, Escape just warps you around the screen. Oh my god. Yeah. All right, dead. Cool. Well, it works. Looks like um, everything's in order. Let me turn this off and get the next game here. I probably won't spend as much time with every game as I did for that game. But um, let's see. I'm just going to grab the first one near me. Bedlam. I don't think I've ever played this one. Grab the cartridge. So these are what the cartridges look like, again. They're, they're very, very light. There's almost nothing in there. That's a tight fit there, looks okay. So the buttons here are fast rotate, zap, fast rotate, and fire. I don't know why fast rotate is there twice, but uh, let's see, it's got a pretty cool uh, overlay. Entertaining new ideas. You know, this might be the first console that has the name of the system on boot up, like the PlayStation or all the, all the machines do now. What is... Oh, it just starts. That is crazy. How do I... How do I move? How do I move? You don't move? You just stay in the middle? Did I lose? That's a losing sound. No, I didn't lose. This reminds me of those old, like, typing instruction, or typing games, where you had to type the letter, uh, and it would shoot the, the corresponding enemy that, um, had that letter above it, and you were always in the middle. This is kind of boring. I mean, it's like, man, why does that noise sound like I've lost? So there's, what is, oh, okay. <laughs> what does that do? It's a smart bomb. It just destroys everything on the screen. We're shooting these weird, like, snowflakes. 
So if I hold, oh, okay. So if I hold down the fast rotate button, it does what you expect. It rotates faster, but you lose some control, some precision, and you want to be precise because those shots are very thin. Again, the losing sound. I've never heard of this game. I guess that it's an original Vectrex title. I don't know. Oh, what the? Oh, okay. It's gonna get sneaky. Okay, okay. Oh my god. Well, that kind of escalated quickly. It was super easy, and then it just became really hard. All right, well, Bedlam. Uh, it's okay. I might have to give it another shot later, but uh, got a lot of games to go through, so uh, I kind of liked it. it was, honestly, it was very much like uh, Mind, Mindstorm, because that's what I pretty much do is to stay in the middle and shoot. So, um, yeah, let's see. Well, let's try Clean Sweep because it's near me and uh, remember this is a Pac-Man-esque game there was a lot of maze games back in the day because uh, Pac-Man was so popular everybody wanted to have their own version of it I remember Casey Munchkin for the Odyssey 2 being one of the better ones but uh, let's see how this fares clean sweep what? oh it doesn't actually have the buttons there's no buttons Maybe it's just uh, truly like Pac-Man, just a stick. I love these overlays. They they just make everything. I can imagine just playing the game without the overlays, even if this is just green. What is this? Okay, so if I push button one, it changes the players and. Button two changes the game type. Yep. I don't know what the game times are, so I'm just gonna go with the default. I how do I start? Oh, okay. So button three also changes. Okay. Button four starts. Um. It looks like I'm be like <laughs> I'm being chased by the shooting thing and from Tempest. Or um. What the heck? Oh, what the heck happened? It even kind of emulates that Pac-Man noise. The background. Where are the power pellets? Is my dude getting bigger? He is getting big. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I remember reading that this was um, supposed to be representing a vacuum cleaner sucking up coins at a bank. That's why you see dollar signs. Um, I, was, I was looking at this. That's why you see dollar sign here. That there's some robbery and I guess they dropped coins or money and you're sucking it up with a vacuum cleaner being chased by a staple remover, I guess. Why am I being chased by a staple remover? So the uh, twist on this is um, the more stuff you pick up, the bigger your your dude gets. And then at some point, see, it doesn't suck up any more coins. Oh my god. This is going to get difficult. So you have to go to the middle, and it kind of dumps all the coins. I guess that's the vault? <laughs> I don't know why I'm so worried about the plot of Clean Sweep. <laughs> like, it matters. Just eat the dots. Oh, I think I can clear this. Oh, you don't even need to dump the last parts of it. Okay. And as far as I can tell, that's the same maze as before, right? It seems like there would be power pellets or something in the corners. Okay, so it's making a noise every time I grow. Okay, now I'm to the point where I can't pick up anything more. So I go into the vault. And I'm making this up, by the way. It may not even be a vault. And maybe I, I misread something, but... 
it makes sense, according to what I see in the screen, that it's a vacuum cleaner because a vacuum cleaner gets full. And I can't pick up any more. Looks like that's a safe zone too. They can't follow me in there. I wonder if you ever get power-ups. Can I dump early? Yes, you can. So that's kind of cool. That's a safe zone. I'm dead. I'm dead. What the heck are those things chasing me? Chances of a cinema between the second and third levels? Zero, right? Shit. God damn it. My last dude. Or my last vacuum cleaner. I should be able to get this. Alright. Doesn't seem to be any faster than me. Why isn't the maze changing? Well, I, you know what? I, I kind of died on purpose. I was sort of done with this game. It's okay. It's not bad. It's just uh, a little weird that, you know, it seems like there's totally areas for the uh, power pellets. You know what? I wonder if version 2 of the game... Okay, let me reset it. Oh, it keeps the high score there. At least through the reset. So let me try game two. Oh, what? I mean, it doesn't actually make it much... Oh, I see. It doesn't make it harder <laughs> while the... Um, while the um, coins are there. But after you eat the coins, you have to remember what the pattern is. Well, luckily, the pattern never changes, apparently. The maze is always the same. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I didn't even... See, I don't know what the... I don't know where they are. I was hoping this one had power pellets in the corner. Alright. So that's clean sweep. I'm gonna kill it now. Pretty cool. Uh, how about Hyper Chase? That is a racing game. Back in this era, almost everything was shoot, right? So it's kind of interesting when uh, you get something like, well, when Pac-Man came out, it was so different because there was no shoot. Um, anyway, Hyper Chase. So a lot of the Vectrex games are shooters. So let's get a racer in there. So buttons here are upshift, downshift, brake, and gas. I hate shifting. I always, I always, I always choose automatic when I play racing games. I don't want to mess with it. Oh, this is okay. So this seems to be a common theme here. I just choose one. Okay, so I have to upshift. Oh my. God, that is sensitive. Oh, wow. Super sensitive. Jesus. What? Oh, I see the gears up there. Boy, you cannot... You, you cannot push too far. Oh, and you gotta start... At, Gear one, two. Why is shift gear up so far to the left? Oh my gosh. Yeah, this game is not that fun.
I kind of dig the uh, the 3D effect. Jeez. So there's only four gears. I guess the I thought it was a timer is really like a uh, odometer. Let's see how far you've gone, maybe. No, it's still going. It's a timer. Oh my god, it's way, way too sensitive. Why is there even a first gear? As soon as I go to it, it immediately complains. Oh, god damn it. This is based... Oh my god, no, I can't do this. This game is not very good. I'm gonna have to say it's the first game I didn't like. It's, I don't mind racing games, but that control is terrible. Way, way, way too sensitive. So I haven't heard good things about Spinball. So I'm gonna try that next just to get it out of the way. I love Pinball though. So maybe it was just reviewed by somebody who didn't like Pinball to begin with, so. I'll keep it open mind. All right. And of course you can't see the name Spinball and not think of Sonic Spinball for the Sega Genesis, which is actually a really fun game. All right, so we got a pause, left flipper, right flipper, shoot. There's actually a pause. So I guess it's game dependent. Dun, dun, dun. Not much music in the way of music on these. Oh, that's really slick. So, looking at here, pause. That is slick. I like that. I don't know why more games don't incorporate that. Left flipper, right flipper. Okay, and then the shoot button. Do I have to. Oh. So you can pull back on the stick right here. Pull back on the stick and choose how far you want to shoot it, and then hit the button and it shoots. Oh, that's pause. Apparently I need to pull it back further than that. Gosh. Yeah, I can see where people don't like this. I'm gonna get the left rollover, the left rollover. Oh, you can tilt. I remember actually liking the, um, yeah, the, uh, first of all, I'm not doing anything and the whole play field is kind of jittering around. That's really weird. And the ball physics are is just weird. I guess that is a, um, yep, it's a, uh, God, what are those called? Not flippers. Not get, oh, those are dropped. How did it get through the wall? So those are rollovers. These are your bumpers. These are drop targets. Spinners. Why can't I remember spinners? And yeah, that's a spinner. These are your in lanes and your out lanes. Uh, uh, I don't understand why the graphics are cons constantly like uh, shifting. Can I tilt? Yes, you can. The answer is yes. If you <laughs> Move it a lot. This game curiously has the most music uh, we've heard yet. And the, gra the graphics are kind of weird. I mean, they're serviceable. The, the physics are... It's like, it's like it, <laughs> you're playing with a racquetball. That is a cool effect. Come on. Backhanding this. See, the ball just bounces strangely. pointing to that you need to do something this is actually more fun than I thought even with the crazy ball what is with the physics on that ball slingshots um, so 
with it. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. I actually like it better than Hyper Chase. That's for sure. It's not bad. It's not bad. I like it. Spin ball. And the only game that uh, so far has had a pause button. Which means no excuse for the other games not to, especially if it's not using the, uh, the other buttons. Okay, let's go to a game that I'm familiar with from Arcade, which is Berserk. This was not originally a vector-based game, but uh, they ported it to the Vectrex. The main thing about Berserk is that it had voice. It would say stuff like, get the intruder, get the humanoid, and um, stuff like that. So it was, it was very distinct back in the, the time that it came out because games didn't really have uh, any kind of voice digitized or just, it just didn't have voice. So this was one of the unique ones. Let's see if this, I, I doubt that it's gonna have voice. Based on what I've heard so far, I would be amazed if it had voice. This is another one where the overlay is just changing the color a little bit, but it gives it a lot of personality. I mean, I really dig the, uh, the, the artwork around it. So <laughs> all four buttons to say fire. One of those should be pause, right? Okay, so here's my dude. Yeah, I can't imagine it talking. I used to play the crap out of this in the 50, uh, sorry, the 2600. Although I do have it for the 5200 too. And that one does have voice. Okay, so you get a bonus for, oh, oh, here, that's Evil Auto. Get out of there. All right. Being attacked by the, uh, smiley face called Evil Auto is so ridiculous. So these things kind of look like a mix of Cylons with their eyes kind of... Oh, man, that thing does not give you a lot of time. And you can't touch the walls, too, because they're electrified. I don't even think that robots can touch the walls. They're supposed to be robots. What I'm saying is it kind of looks like the octopus look... Oh, that's not even fair. How long was I on that stage? Seriously. Oh, and it changed the stage, too. Uh, my friend Ricky and I were playing the 5200 version. He noticed the same thing. When you die, it doesn't actually just keep you going to the same level. It changes the level completely. So, auto... Oh, cool. You just, hey, dude, kill yourself so I can get a bonus. Oh, here comes auto. Never mind. The emoji from 1982. There's actually a sequel to this called Frenzy. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about Frenzy. Oh, he killed himself. Get a bonus. The game plays okay. Um, not having sound is kind of a bummer, but expected, I suppose. The graphics are nice and sharp, as most graphics are in the Vectrex. Uh, get out of there. I don't even remember. Is if there, Am I trying to escape, or...? I don't think you can ever finish. This is probably a mistake going for this dude. Because now I've fucked myself on time. Oh, not bad. As long as auto doesn't come at the bottom. There we go. I love when the eyes shift. Like that guy right there. Oh, jeez, that didn't give me much time at all. So Evil Lotto is there basically because this is supposed to be a quarter muncher. It doesn't want you to just sit there idly when somebody else could be plunking down a quarter. Are you serious? It's not too hard. Uh-oh, as soon as I say that. These dudes aren't even shooting at me. Mars People. That was the name of the thing I was trying to say. I never got to say it. Mars People was uh, a character you could select in Capcom vs. SNK, a fighting game for the Neo Geo. And uh, it's uh, one of the characters that comes out in the Metal Slug series. I'm not sure if it was 2 or 3 where it was first introduced. But it looks like this squid thing um, with a gun. Oh, God. Okay, well, I died. And these, are, look, these things look like squid things with guns. Yeah, I'm not going for you guys. 
Forget it. What? Started me. What the dude's at point blank. Should I go for this guy? Why not? By the way, all these games uh, have put in had been put into the public domain by the owner of um, the engineering company that wow shot four times that developed these games originally. Before, I think what happened is um, got you human. See, normally would say got you humanoid, but um, yeah, I guess you have to do the voice yourself. But these old games, you got to be creative, right? Um, anyway, this uh, the Vectrex when it got sold, picked up by. Uh, so it was, I think it was like Smith Engineering, or I can't remember the name of the firm that first came up with the uh, the concept of the Vectrex. Then they got partnered or bought out by General Consumer Electronics. And then when they released the Vectrex, Milton Bradley was very eager to get into the uh, video game business. And so they bought out GCE and um, immediately started having problems with the crash. But... Um, what was I going with this? Oh, they they eventually lost tens of millions of dollars on this Vectrex, and the rights reverted back to the engineering company. I, I swear it was Smith, but could be wrong. The engineering company and the head of the engineering company sometime in the 90s uh, just gave people rights to basically redistribute, they, redistribute the, um, the game. So that's why you have multi-carts, which are legally uh, being sold. Because the software is in public domain now. And people still develop homebrew games for this thing. They're pretty expensive, though. So what do we got here? We got Scramble. All right. Scramble is a Konami game. Oh, we can three different game types. That uh, is a predecessor to Gradius. So you can, I remember, you can shoot forward. Oh, gosh, it starts. You shoot forward and you can shoot bombs. Okay, so now I'm remembering. There's a, that line at the bottom. It's just where it says fuel level. It's your fuel level. You can actually run out of fuel in this, and when you run out of fuel, your ship just falls to the surface. And the only way to get more fuel, and this doesn't make any sense at all, is to blow up the fuel cells. You would think it would be to dock with a fueling station or something, but nope, you just blow up fuel cells on the ground, and that gives you more fuel, because that makes sense, because it's a video game. You can see the beginnings of um, the Gradius series here. I believe you can't touch the top or the bottom, like in Gradius, or my favorite, Parodius. I'm just arbitrarily dropping bombs, by the way. Okay. You know, this button is labeled laser, but it looks like dots. They look more like bullets than lasers. I imagine lasers would be like long, thin lines. Oh, I got a free dude. Extra life. Alright, uh, that was getting a little cocky and not even moving. This game is actually pretty fun. I need an auto fire though. Oh, what the? Being attacked by space sperm. Oh, you can't even shoot those things. This goes right through it. I'm not even going to bother to shoot them. Well, maybe something might come up. I'm just dodging these things. Oh my god. Surprised it did as well as it did.
This is the most sound of a Vectrex game yet. Damn. That is tough. How fucking long is this part of the game? You can tell how much I like the game or how intense it is by how little I talk. Can we get past this part of the game, please? Oh my god, it just trapped me. I, I thought I could go... I saw another guy? I think, I think it starts to be at the beginning pretty much every time. I knew that was going to happen. God damn. That was fun, though. Alright, I'm not going to start from the beginning. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be playing more Scramble. Cool. Alright. I like that one. Thumbs up. Well, we've gone through about half of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have six remaining. Um, let us go to Star Trek. The motion picture. Star Trek the motion picture sucked. Not the game, but the actual motion picture. I was never a big Star Trek fan, but God, that was the most boring Star Trek possible. Alright. Let's see what this is like. So we have Power Link, Shield, and Fire. Star Trek the game. So it's Star Trek the motion picture of the game. Again, this is game variants. This was made popular. What, eight game variants? Made popular by Atari. They would get more mileage out of the games. They would give you, like, combat cartridge. Oh, shoot, just starts. And uh, then give you different ways to play it. Is that supposed to be the Star Trek theme? Let's go. I'm ready. Ooh, this looks cool. What is that? Oh, it's shields. Oh, are those warbirds? Birds of prey. Okay, okay, let me turn this up a little bit. I'm ready, let's go. So it's a dog fighting game. So I'm not a big Trekkie. I can't tell the difference between a Romulan and a Klingon warship. I'm just going to go with these or Klingon just because... Why not? What is that? I'm so bad at my Star Trek stuff that I can't remember which ones are the ones that cloak. That's because, oh man, that's because I've seen all, um, all 70 or whatever original series Star Trek, uh, TV, sh TV shows. They were on Netflix and I just watched one a day, every day for lunch for like a year. Oh, that was quick. Sector 2 just kind of... Oh, was that... For some reason I'm thinking that was a spaceport that I was supposed to dock with and not just obliterate. Okay, so she okay, so I gotta remember to have shields. Again, you can tell how much I'm concentrating by the fact that I'm not talking at all. Am I out of bullets? What the shit? You can run out of bullets? Where's that? I don't see that anywhere. Power link. How do I, what is power link? Ooh. Oh, 
Oh, that's definitely a bad guy. That's definitely a bad guy. I'm ready. Wow, that is not cool. Okay, shield strength and fire power. So that's how much. That's how much stuff. It so you can have both down. thing is tough. Any key for replay. Well, I kind of liked it at the beginning, but then not so much. I'll have to spend a little bit more time, maybe try one of the other game modes. But, uh, yeah, it was okay. It's like Star Raiders for the 2600, I think. Um, Web Wars. This is supposed to be like a Tempest type clone. See. Buttons here are exit trophy room. Exit trophy room. It's important enough that it's twice. I don't know. Capture and fire. That's interesting. Dun dun dun. All right. So I'm excited for this one. I like Tempest. Oh, this looks really cool. Oh, that looks really cool. So that's the well, the thing with vector graphics is you can do this kind of rudimentary 3D, wireframe 3D. Why am I going so slow? And why am I a space pigeon? What the? Can I go? Oh, okay, I can go up. Okay, some speed maybe. What is that coming towards me? It's like a giant space owl. I just died. Okay, so my lives are up there. Come on, space pigeon, or space hawk, or whatever you are. Space sparrow. God. Okay, don't go that fast. What does this do? What is that? I don't understand. I don't understand what is going on. What is happening to my space pigeon? It's a little bit like Gyrus too, I think. Oh. All right, there we go. Clearing them out now. I wish I knew what this capture thing did. Let me speed up some. Oh, here comes the space owl. Oh. You know, I might actually have to read the directions on that one because it, it was a little bit more complicated than than I thought it would be. Um, trophy room. I don't even know. Okay. Uh, I'll have to come back to Web Wars at some point. It seemed interesting. Definitely had really cool graphics. I like that effect, that 3D effect. All right, we're down to our last four. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Rip Off. Which, by the way, I think I mentioned this during the unboxing part, but it is the that is the coolest name for a game ever. I just imagine like the designers naming it ripoff, you know, and thinking how they're ripping off the uh, the people for their quarters. So let's see. So have rotate left, rotate right, thrust and fire. So that is that's straight up asteroids, right? And it's very similar to. In fact, it might be exactly the same as um, uh, Star Castle. In fact, Star Castle has a similar thing in the middle, except for, what is that, a hexagon? Uh, instead of a hexagon, it's a uh, circle. All right. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wow. Wow. What was that? 16 game modes? Yep. Well, let's do a game. Bad guys or. Well, they're not killing me. You can also play with the, uh, with the buttons. Yeah, I'm gonna try the stick. Oh, they're stealing my dudes! <laughs> Are they ripping them off? And really, is that, is that, oh my god. So it's like a, kind of a crazy defender, maybe? What the heck? Dude, dude, come back with my shit. Come back with my triangle people. God. No, no. It's like reverse of Sydney Star, too. What killed me? If you're gonna kill me, at least let me know what killed me. Oh my god. I only have two dudes left. Oh, oh I still got another guy. What? Oh. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Just, if they steal all your dudes, you are done. If they rip you off, you are done. Okay, well, it was cool. I think I like uh, Star Castle better. Better. Which I'm going to pop in right now. So I feel like I have to be extra careful with this one because it's the most expensive game. Um, it's a, one of the rarer games. So, Star Castle. Man, this is in great shape. All right, here we go. So you see, it's very similar to ripoff. Left, right, thrust, fire. It's got that thing in the center. But in this one, you actually have to destroy the Star Castle in the middle. Oh, 1983, so that's probably why it was rare. All right, how many game types is this one? Oh, two. I want to start. So kind of similar to Yars Revenge, too. I think I mentioned that. You have to destroy this thing that is protecting the Star Castle. Oh my god, that thing is so tiny. But it can't, oh shit, okay. You can't, um, can't scroll to the next side of the street. Oh my goodness. So as soon as you break, come on, fucking Star Castle, duck. God damn it. Oh, I had it. Give me one more dude. Give me one more dude. I got this. Oh, you son of a bitch. Just grew more, more shields. Oh, I see. It's spitting them out. No, 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 no. Well, you can shoot them, but man, it's a small, small target. That wasn't even near me. That was some bullshit. That shot was not even near me. Uh, I'm gonna try that again. Turn it up a little bit. I... All right. Let's get rid of some of these shields. Oh, 
God, you can hear me furiously hitting these buttons. Why do they keep just making more? Let me pass this fucking level. Oh, okay, I so see you don't die from hitting that. God, I feel like I'm making like no progress. No, 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 no. Is there no time limit? I can just do this forever? Funny how the sound cuts out. Damn it, quit making more fucking shields. How can I get through this? Oh my god, I don't remember this being this frustrating. Fuck you, Star Castle. Holy crap. A little oh I killed it fuck yeah the, the little dude even looks like uh, um, the little guy that you are from Yars Revenge you play like a little fly um, like a human like an anthropom anthropom uh, anthropomorphic fly creature how come I died there I must have touched one oh Jesus my fingers are on the wrong buttons what all right, whatever. I beat you once, Star Castle. So, um, yeah, that game, that game is fun, but man, it, it's harder than I remember. But it's still really cool. I'll definitely be coming back to that one. I can see why it's so expensive. Um, all right, I have two left. Armor Attack is the next one. And I think this one would be more like combat. I'm not sure. But if it is, it would probably be, gre be great as a two-player game. I don't have a second player here with me. Uh, armor attack. It's weird because it's like armor dot dot attack. And it's not quite like a full ellipse, ellipses where it's three dots. So I don't know what they're trying to tell me there. Armor attack. What the buttons are rotate left, rotate right, thrust and fire, which seems to be a common theme. This overlay is kind of, kind of cool. It's got, uh, I don't know, like jungly type of marks there okay how many games types do we have here three all right that looks like a jeep a jeep with a rocket launcher because why not it's almost kind of like tron that area in tron we oh this game is fucking cool oh look at that it just stays there like all on fire and shit how am I supposed to kill that thing? Or do Oh god. That is not even close to being fair. What happened? Is that it? And a jeep versus a tank? Really? Who thought that was fair? Honestly, since I have just as powerful of an attack as the tank does, it's better in my favor. Oh my goodness. Oh, that tank is still functional. Destroyed. There doesn't seem to be a goal of... Can I touch these walls? No. You can, but you don't die or anything. Oh, I shot it. 
Nice. Man. This is not what I expected at all. I like how these missiles are anti-airs as well. These rockets. This game's too easy. Too easy. Where's my score? Do we get a score at the end? Oh. I'm trying to think of it, a Tron game would be cool, like the light cycle. Yeah, the score's at the end. A Tron light cycle game would be great. Okay. I guess I got one dude left. And again, I assume this is a Jeep. It looks like a Jeep. A Jeep with badass rockets. Ugh. All right. I did so well at the beginning and then it all went kaput. Anyway, armor attack. That was that was very good. I, I actually like that. I imagine that's pretty fun two player. If it's head to head. All right, that brings us to the last game. Cosmic Chasm. So this is the one I had been talking about where it had like a bomb. This is the one where you play the bad guys, right? The terrorists. I'm gonna go and uh, attack the planet protectors and destroy their planets. Probably because they didn't pay up, right? Uh, so my actions are grill, grill. <laughs> Drill, shield, thrust, and fire. A grill would have been interesting. But, uh, all right. Cosmic Chasm. Dun, dun, dun. Another one where it's just changing the color and it gives it sort of an atmosphere. Cosmic Chasm. All right, so. Mission one. Let's go. What? This looks complicated. I just want to play. Look, I'm destroying the planet protectors. These are probably like, you know, good guys defending the, what do I have to do here? Oh, don't touch the middle. I guess I don't remember. Oh wait, I think I just have to... I look like a Y-Wing from Star Wars. Okay. I didn't hit drill in time, I suppose. So the map is basically telling me that I need to go straight. So that's drill. What the shit? How am I supposed to get through that? Die, planet protectors. Even though you're not even shooting at me. So there's the drill. What? What am I supposed to do? This is okay. I don't understand. How am I supposed to get through that? Is there a demo mode if I just let it sit for a while? Because that's the reactor core or whatever, and when it gets you know too big, it just blows up, and you die. But what's with the drill? I shot everything on the screen. It still didn't open up those passages ways. I couldn't drill through it, and I think I tried shield, and it just bounced off of it. But uh, anyway, I think that's good enough for now. 
So those are the 13 games that I have for the Vectrex. Um, most of them are actually really fun. There's a couple of redundant ideas there. A lot of them have the left, right, thrust and fire uh, control, but you know, what can you do? It's back in the early 80s, the uh, arcade scene was basically shoot and kill everything, lots of spaceships. So that's what we're getting a lot of here. Um, but overall, the system is really, really cool. It's a great piece of history. Uh, I love it. The one that I got is just an amazing condition. I'm super happy. Uh, I highly recommend that if you don't buy one, that you at least try one at some point. They're really, really cool. Um, the controls are really good, actually. The joystick is very responsive. The buttons on this one, at least, feel great. And uh, it's really neat. You can kind of carry this around. Um, you know, you can put it away in your closet when you're not using it. It doesn't have to be connected to your television. Um, anyway, super, super cool. Highly recommended. GCE Vectrex. I love it. All right. Thanks for watching. If you watch this whole thing, I applaud your efforts. You must be either really bored or just love retro gaming. But I will be back with some um, more retro gaming videos as soon as I get something interesting to, to film. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for taking me out, Cosmic Chasm. <laughs>